this video we are going to learn one of the most important topics of this course elastic load balancer let's see what a load balancer is a load balancer basically accepts the traffic to your application from clients and distribute it to the registered targets such as ec2 instances containers and ip addresses such that none of them gets overloaded the types of load balancer that we are going to learn as part of this course are application load balancer network load balancer and classic load balancer to understand this concept let us take a look at this web application architecture it has a web server that accepts traffic from clients does the login interacts with the database servers in general processes the business logic of the application now obviously using a single server is not a good architecture because first it may not handle the load of the traffic and second it becomes the single point of failure so you might change this architecture such that you will have a fleet of web servers to handle the potentially increasing traffic load but now the problem is that one server may receive more traffic than the other and then you will have at least two architectural issues first such overloaded server will become a bottleneck and your application may become unresponsive and second the rest of the web servers will remain idle and keep costing you money this is where a load balancer solves your problem typically you will have a load balancer that stays in front of the web servers accepts the traffic and then distributes it to the targets in this case web servers or instances such that none of them gets overloaded now before we see the advantages of using elastic load balancer first let us understand what is meant by being elastic the elastic load balancer basically scales that is scaling in or scaling out as the traffic to your application changes over time and it can scale to the vast majority of your workout now let us see some of the advantages of using elastic load balancer or why to even use it as mentioned earlier it distributes the workloads across multiple compute resources such as ec2 instances or ip addresses or containers etc since it removes the possibility of a bottleneck or any unutilized resources it increases the availability and fault tolerance of your applications it handles the application layer traffic such as http or https as well as network layer traffic that is tcp or transmission control protocol we will see this in detail in subsequent videos it also provides health check for target resources that is the load balancer monitors the health of its registered targets and ensures that it routes the traffic only to the healthy targets we will see this in a demonstration later but for now just remember that when the load balancer detects an unhealthy target it stops routing to that target and then resumes routing traffic to that target when it detects that the target is healthy again elastic load balancer offers you flexibility that is you can add and remove compute resources from your load balancer as needed without disrupting the overall flow of requests to your applications you can create access and manage your load balancers using amazon web services management console or command line interface sdk or query api it works well with the other services to improve the overall availability and scalability of your applications such as ec2 ecs auto scaling cloudwatch vpc route 53 etc it supports hybrid load balancing this is one of the major advantages of using elastic load balancer it offers ability to load balance across amazon web services and on premises resources using the same load balancer this makes it easy for you to migrate burst or even fail over on premises applications to the cloud 
Now let us see some of the important points related to elastic load balancer. When you enable an availability zone for your load balancer, the elastic load balancing creates a load balancer node in that availability zone. If you register targets in an availability zone but do not enable the availability zone, these targets do not receive the traffic and we will see that in our demonstration later. Now one more important concept that you will come across while working with elastic load balancing is cross zone load balancing. That is after accepting the traffic from the client, the elastic load balancer routes the request to its register targets instances in one or more availability zones. This is called as cross zone load balancing. The most effective way of utilizing a load balancer is to ensure that it encompasses multiple availability zones and each availability zone has at least one register target. This makes sense because with this configuration, even if an entire availability zone goes down, your application can still be available via the instances in the other availability zone. However, if you disable an availability zone, the targets in that availability zone remain registered with the load balancer, but they will not receive the traffic from the load balancer. When the load balancer detects an unhealthy target, as I mentioned earlier, it stops routing the traffic to that target and then resumes it once it determines that the target is healthy again. Now, one of the major components of elastic load balancing is configuration of listeners. So basically you configure your load balancer to accept incoming traffic by specifying one or more listeners. Now before we go and configure a load balancer for us, let us understand this cross zone load balancing concept a bit in detail. As mentioned earlier, the most effective way of utilizing a load balancer is to ensure that it encompasses multiple availability zones and each availability zone has at least one register target. In this architecture, we have two cross zone load balancing nodes that encompass both availability zones. So each load balancer node distributes traffic across the register targets in both the availability zones. Let's say you have configured your traffic routing via route 53 and the routing algorithm distributes 50% of the traffic to load balancer A and 50% to the load balancer B. Since the load balancer A can balance the traffic across instances from both availability zones, it is going to distribute its entire traffic, which is just 50% of the overall traffic, to all the instances. Similarly, load balancer B will also do the same. That is, it will distribute its entire traffic to all these instances. So, Overall, you will find that each instance will ultimately get the 20% of the overall traffic. And you can see in colors green and blue that it receives 10% each. That is, each instance will have 20% of the overall traffic. Now, when cross zone load balancing is disabled, each load balancer node distributes traffic across the instances in its available zone only. That is, Elastic load balancer A will distribute the traffic among the instances which are in the same availability zone that is AZ1. Similarly, elastic load balancer B will do the same but it will only route the traffic to the instances in availability zone 2. So, in our example, the nodes in availability zone 1 will bear the 50% of the overall traffic that is 25% each. Whereas the nodes in availability zone 2 will receive 50 by 3 that is 16.6% .6 approximately on each instance. So just take a moment, look at this diagram and understand how the balancing is done when the cross zone load balancing is enabled and disabled. Now one tip for the exam is that you need to remember that cross zone load balancing is always enabled for application load balancers 
and disabled by default for network load balancers. There are three types of elastic load balancers that we are going to study as part of this course. Application load balancer, which basically routes the HTTP or HTTPS traffic. Network load balancer, which deals with the TCP level traffic and classic load balancer. Before we dive deep into learning these load balancers, I strongly recommend you to read and understand all the layers of the OSI model. The main concept of OSI is that the process of communication between two endpoints in a network can be divided into seven distinct groups of related functions or layers. To understand how the application load balancer and network load balancers behave and why do they do that, you need to at least understand how the protocols such as HTTP or HTTPS and TCP work. You do not need to dive deep into those, but a fair understanding is strongly recommended. Now let us see these types in detail in the subsequent videos.